Hi, this is pet dentist and oral surgeon Joe Banyard and in this video I am going to talk about a surgery to treat cancer in the front of the lower jaw in a dog and this is Fred's story. Advanced training is required. Fred is a nine-year-old male neutered Lassa Apso dog and his owner noticed a lump in the front of his left lower jaw. His family vet took a biopsy which was sent to the lab for analysis and the pathologist diagnosed acanthomatous amelioblastoma, which is a cancer. Surgery is required to remove the cancer. And for the owner, the big worry was, what would her little dog look like? And can he still eat after the surgery and live a happy life? So she needed to know that Fred will look different after the surgery. This is what Fred's profile looked like when I first saw him. You can see that his upper jaw is shorter than his jaw. This is called a class three malocclusion. And this is the appearance of the lump on the left lower jaw from the front of the dog. Now, how much needs to be removed really depends on the type of cancer. This is an amelioblastoma and it has certain characteristics. It's known to invade the surrounding bone around the mass. It is not known to go to the lymph nodes and it's not known to spread to other parts of the body, which is good news. If you have a cancer that does this, then further treatments need to be done. Margins needed are one to two centimeters away from any evidence of the tumor. So you can see tumor in the soft tissues of the gums in the mouth, and that's what you've seen. Remember that your veterinarian or any specialist can only see what you see. So in order to see what's in the bone, you have to take x-rays, okay? so. I need to take away tissue that is one centimeter to two centimeters beyond what we can see either in the mouth or in the x-ray. So here is the mass that is going to be x-rayed and here is the survey x-ray. So the funny looking bone, the disorganized looking bone is the bone that has the tumor and you can see it's quite extensive. So the yellow arrows here are pointing to the abnormal bone and I've got some uh, arrows pointing to normal bone. You can see it's much smoother in appearance. And the yellow line shows you the extent of the abnormal bone. So all of that has to go and another centimeter to make sure that we catch all the little bits and pieces that have spread into the surrounding a, a normal bone that we cannot see. Now, unfortunately, with Fred, and he's a little dog, so in Fred I take one centimeter beyond the extent of the mass. You can see that the red line here is roughly where the mass is and where it goes into the bone. And the yellow line is showing you roughly the one centimeter margins that I took. Now, on the outside of the teeth, it is actually going down the jaw, so it doesn't look like it's a centimeter, but it is actually a centimeter, I measured it. But you can see on the center of the lower jaw, that join between the, the left and the right jaws, it ends at a spot where I'm actually cutting into it. So I have to cut beyond the join of the jaw. And so, Fred is going to have a, a bit of an unstable jaw. But that didn't seem to be a problem. Here he is after the surgery. As you can see, he's uh, still a little bit wobbly from the anesthetic, but his appearance is really good. And was his family happy with the results of the surgery? Yes, they were very happy. He was more comfortable. He was able to live his life normally. He healed well and the sutures were removed by his regular veterinarian under anesthetic because Fred likes to bite. He bites everybody, including his owner. 
and his appearance was fine and everyone was happy with the results. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe, like and share this knowledge with your friends and family so that other pets can live a comfortable and happy life. Bye.